we have a problem. We are out of IP addresses. And as you know, every device on a network has to have an IP address. But back when they came up with IP addressing, they're like, oh, it's just going to be the Department of Defense and, oh, maybe a couple of colleges. That's why they use 127.001 to ping yourself. And unfortunately, that eight. 16,777,000 and some odd addresses. They just flushed them away because, oh, there's plenty. We can always make more. Well, we're out. We are officially out of regular IP addresses. But every device and every network needs to have an IP address. If you have a refrigerator that hooks up to the internet, and don't laugh, I've seen them, you got to have an IP address. So what do we do? Well, we're going to use what is called a private IP address range. This private IP address range is still a valid IP address. It can still go from device to device to device, but it has a unique characteristic. It is not routable on the internet. It simply isn't. If it sees a packet that's supposed to go to one of these private IP addresses, the router will simply say, well, this is an invalid address, and it'll just throw it away. But how does it work internally? Well, it works just like any other routing IP address. You know, checks a routing table. Hey, do I know how to get there? Yes, I do. Boom, there it is. Away it goes. You do need to memorize the range of addresses. We have a class A, we have some class Bs, we have class Cs. Uh, memorize the ranges. You have to know them. The most popular range, of course, is the 10 address range. Chances are, unless you're in a home environment where you're using a consumer level device, you are using a 10 address range because it gives you 16,777,000 some odd addresses and they're free. And then you can break them up by class B's or break them up by custom subnetting or whatever you'd like to do. But memorize the range. It's 10.0.0.0 to 10.25.25.25. This is what you're going to see the most of. We also have 172.16, class B to 172.31.285.285. Uh, and again, these are class B addresses. But 172.16, it's kind of a weird number. And if I can have 16,777,000 of something, or only 32,000 of something, why would I go with a smaller number? And yet, sometimes you are going to see this. Now, 192.168, it's a class C address range. Um, the thing about 192.168 is you really shouldn't use it in any environment at all, in a corporate environment. If you're, if you're gonna do it in a home environment, that's great, because most of those consumer level wireless access points or if you get like a cable modem router or something like that that automatically hands out IP addresses, it's going to hand them out in a 192.168 range. This is also used by what's called automatic private IP addressing or a PIPA, very popular with Microsoft systems. So if everybody's using it, what's the big deal? Well, 192.168, if I'm in a corporate environment and we have security and firewalls and all that and we're not allowing wireless, maybe we're doing you know, certain things to allow wireless, you may have somebody go out to a consumer electronics store, buy a wireless access point, plug it in, and then it just automatically starts handing out IP addresses of 192.168. So if you see 192.168 in your environment, that's a huge flag that says somebody dropped in an unauthorized consumer level device. And that will make it a lot easier for you to troubleshoot and hunt the stuff down and, and so on and so on. So again, these are the ranges, you need to memorize them, but don't use, in my opinion, anybody but the 10 range. Now, of course, if you already have an environment and it's already configured and you have to use 172.16, okay, that's what you gotta use, that's what you gotta use. But again, we run into the problem. If this is something that doesn't route to the internet, how do we get to the internet? I mean, I'm, I'm at home and I'm on a 192.168 address. How am I getting to the internet? Well, they have this device that you're going to learn how to configure later called Network Address Translation. And what Network Address, uh, Network address Translation does is it has a real live IP address and it converts it to our private addresses, sends the traffic inside. When it has to go back out, it goes back to the NAT device, which translated, translates it back into the real live IP address. And it keeps track of all the stuff. It, it's pretty cool and you'll see it a little bit later. But again, you need to make sure that you memorize these particular ranges of addresses and my recommendation, try and stay within 10.